All right, so today is top 10 fails using citric acid. This is something you're gonna clean your equipment and your pumps with. There's all kinds of good reasons to use it, but you can also use it wrong. So today you learn from our mistakes so you don't have to. So starting with number one, when do you use it? Yeah, that is the mistake, is not using citric acid or not even cleaning your pumps early on uh, and rather than waiting for the pump to completely die and fail. I think that's pretty common actually for people to wait until they suddenly notice the pump isn't working at all and then use that as a sign to clean it. There's actually a rhythm, you can catch it before that, you can see the signs of all the coralline algae on it. And actually, you can see that it probably is running at half speed long before it totally fails. Spend a lot of money on that to get the flow that you're looking for. And you'll see it instantly once you clean it and put it back in, how much flow you get back into the tank. So don't wait till it fails. You can preempt that. So number two, I'm not really sure this is true or not, but I don't care. Yeah, so the mistake is assuming that this is better than vinegar. Uh, both are used for cleaning, and there are some concerns with one or the other. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I use vinegar forever. Yes. Uh, and I haven't actually experienced some of the concerns that the community does, but uh, people have uh, come to the conclusion that the vinegar will actually expand the magnets inside of uh, some very expensive mm. pumps, blow them up and uh, you know destroy your equipment. And so I don't need to learn that way. Uh, for me, it's about the same price either way. So citric acid is what the community uses, so I use it too. Number three, there's actually an easy way and a hard way. Yeah, so the uh, make it easy on yourself. Don't make the mistake of not running your pumps in the citric acid solution. Uh, it just the automatic movement of the water is going to clean it probably faster than just sitting in solution. I would say there is a periodic cleaning and like a total overhaul. Yeah. So sometimes you just need to totally disassemble the whole pump and soak everything. Mm -hmm. Other times I can just take a bowl of the citric acid solution, put the pump in there and let it run inside of it and uh, it will clean it all up. And by bowl I actually mean bucket. Yes. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so you can actually just run the pump in the solution and the mechanism of pumping the water around will actually clean it all by itself. So that would be the periodic solution and then sometimes doing that full cleaning. Number four, you can do other things with it. Yeah, so the mistake is it's not just for pumps, you can actually use it to clean other things so it can get rid of uh, that buildup inside your skimmer or some other uh, equipment that's running in your tank. Really good on coralline algae too. Yeah, so if you want to clean chloralline algae off of uh, buildup in your refugium or your entire sump, you just want to clean it all out uh, with a brand new sump or mm -hmm. take an old one that's been sitting in the garage for a long time, all kinds of different things. Anything that has calcium carbonate or precipitate or chloralline algae that you want to clean mm -hmm. off, all kinds of things, it just makes it a lot, lot easier to clean. All right, so number five, not the most significant thing here, but also wise to understand. Yeah, so it's a mistake to not take into consideration that this is acid, and maybe it's wise to use gloves and, and not add water to powder, but always powder to water, so it's not super concentrated. Yeah, so it's actually acid to water, you know, yeah. not water to acid. And in this case, uh, you know, the gloves are just gonna stop some irritation that you might get, uh, some people with sensitive skin. So it is a chemical, use some safety gear. All right, so number six, there is an easy way and there's a hard way. Yeah, this goes back to cleaning with your equipment and the, the mistake is not letting these uh, your equipment sit in the solution rather than trying to scrub it. The longer you let it sit, the more it can eat away at that uh, hard buildup and the easier it is to clean. Yeah, so if you let it soak for an hour and you come back and you're still scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing, uh, come back in three and just watch it all fall off. Yeah, true. Yeah, so uh, just you know, give it some time and it will do its work. It's a lot easier to let it soak than it is to scrub. Number seven, how big? Yeah, so I can either get the small one, but it would be a mistake to not consider just a big one. I'm gonna use all of this anyway. This big one might last me a year, might last me longer than that, but I'm going to use it eventually and it doesn't uh, have a shelf life. Now this is one of those things where, uh, I don't know, this will take me a ways. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I actually use quite a bit of this stuff yes. uh, anytime I'm clean because it just makes it so much easier. It's super, super cheap. So for a few extra bucks, you can have almost a lifetime supply. Number eight. Uh, it's food grade, but don't eat it. Yeah, so uh, you could probably go out there and find almost any food grade uh, uh, citric acid mm -hmm. out there and, and use it for this purpose. So if you have a line in that, go for it. Uh, we offer it here, it's food grade. 
but uh, it isn't a food gauge facility that is produced in, so don't eat it. Number nine, uh, I think this is obvious, but we should say it anyway. Yeah, so don't make the mistake of just adding citric acid to the tank. You don't want to get the stuff in the tank. It could actually probably drive down oxygen pretty quick. I probably drive down the pH is what it probably do. Yeah. So don't just go dump this in the tank. <laughs> don't uh, uh, go ahead and like uh, uh, scrub it in a live tank and get it in there. It's obvious, but we should say it anyway. So number 10, there's actually some surfaces that it's hard to get it to stick to. Yeah, so here's the mistake of not getting uh, creative with how you use or apply the citric acid solution. Here, like the sides of the walls of my sump, I can wet a paper towel and slap it on there and it'll just sit. Yeah, if you have an old sump that you're trying to clean from the garage, I could choose to fill it all the way up and then just dump all this stuff in there until I've wasted half the bucket. <laughs> or I could just make a small amount, soak those paper towels and stick it to the surface and let it sit for a while and it'll wipe right off. So yeah, use a little bit of it mm -hmm. ingenuity and you can find some unique ways to use this and uh, save some money along the way. Okay, so if you only heard one thing today, let it be this. Yeah, for me, it's a, I can make a bucket of this stuff. I can take it right next to the tank, pull my pump out, put it right there, turn the pump back on, I'm done. Uh, so run it inside the citric acid. For me, skip the vinegar citric acid debate. I, I don't know the answer to the equation, uh, but I do know almost all the reefers out there nowadays are using citric acid. It's widely used, it, uh, it's theorized to protect your pumps. I don't want to find out by ruining it, so citric acid for me. All right, so if you heard enough and you want to pick up some citric acid, <laughs> here it is.